Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. It's the 4th of October 2019. Welcome to the late one with yours truly, Silver and Sidil. All the way from the UK. With those on Instagram and also those on Facebook. And wherever you are, if you catch me on the replay, the late watch party, whatever. Thank you. Hey Darren, how are you doing? I hope you're in a forgiving state of mind. Have you got anything to for that, that you need to forgive me for, um, Darren? <laughs> hope your leg is okay as well. It's good. Uh, please share this video as well. It'll be great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, good evening and uh, welcome to the late one with yours truly, Silver and Cyril. I'm coming on from Silver and TV uh, Facebook page instead of my personal Facebook page. I just want to do a test on it as well just to see how that flows. Um, so thank you for for coming on. And uh, and I want to, to really uh, talk about something which I find or found very what should I say very interesting today and it's not just today but over a while whereby I've seen the responses to positive things responses to positive things which are not normally the way how things normally is when it comes on to positive things the positive things response to positive things are not the same you know and i i think i go straight into it because there's been a very interesting development in a, a particular situation in the united states of america right and and what has been happening is forgiveness Forgiveness is deemed to be something which tend to be or seems to be somewhat of a nasty word. Forgiveness deemed to be something which is not accepted 
as what would normally be accepted many years ago the word forgiveness right and it makes you wonder why this is so and I've been thinking about this well I've always been thinking about many different things and Botham Jean you all might know about the story of Botham Jean yeah the murder of Botham Jean let's not talk about manslaughter let's say the murder of Botham Jean because that is what it was held on September the 6th 2018 off-duty Dallas Police Department patrol officer Amber Goiga entered the Dallas Texas apartment of Botham Jean and what she did shot and kill him Goiga said that she had entered the apartment believing it was her own and she shot Jean believing he was a burglar okay that's that's the fact yeah on October the 1st a few days ago 2019 she was found guilty of murder and on the second she received a sentence of 10 years in prison okay 10 years in prison so the most important thing is um, that she was convicted of murder. I think they were looking for manslaughter, but she got murder. Yeah, convicted for murder. What is controversial in the house still is the fact that she got 10 years. It's murder, 10 years. And many people are not happy with that because guess what? Well, that's one of the first thing that many people are not happy with is she got 10 years and they believe she'll be out in five years. So it's like a slap in the face, in a way. Okay? Maybe it's for good behavior. I don't know the, the rational behind it in anything. But let me just talk a bit about Botham Jean. A 26-year-old black man was at Harding University, alum alumnus, an accountant for PricewaterhouseCooper, born in St. Lucia, Following the shooting, an attorney representing the family accused the Dallas Police Department of smearing even Jean's reputation. Lawyers also disputed the account of the incident that Gurner told officials, which was recorded in the warrant affidavit, and asserted that two independent witnesses had come toward to give recollection that conflicted with Gurner's account. His apartment was on the third floor directly below Jean's apartment on the fourth. An apartment building with most identical floor plans on each level. After Giga shot Jean, she called 911. Jean was taken to a hospital nearby, died, succumbed to his womb. The Texas Rangers investigated the shooting, led to her being arrested three days later. Okay? Now, Fast forward to today or yesterday or when 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 the the trial his brother his brother given a test um understand speaking made a declaration good evening and the declaration that the brother made is that and you have heard it and everybody have seen it and that's why many people are fuming what he said is that I forgive you but he, want, he went one step further by even saying, I don't even want you to go to prison. I don't want anything to go wrong with you. I want you to know Jesus Christ. And I want to give your life to the Lord and to be, um, be free or whatever like that. And then he asked the judge for something. He asked the judge and he said to the judge, can I hug her? Is it possible to hug her? Good evening from Canada. Can I hug her? That's what he asked. Can I hug her? After I sense a few hesitations from the judge, she said yes. And he hugged her. He hugged her. Yep. And they hugged. 
They let go and they hugged and they muttered words and they were crying in the house. I, I haven't watched a trial, but I heard it was emotionally charged atmosphere. He hugged her. But upon looking further, there were other images that came out, not just the one whereby he hugged her. It said, there's a first image of one of the court bailiffs stroking Gregor's hair. A slightly complete alien to black defendants convicted of even minor crimes. Hi, Kathy. Grant Jean, a brother of disease, gave a victim impatient statement which he asked to hug the woman who killed his brother. Request was granted. Two raced to embrace one another. Based on what I saw, it wasn't two raced. He moved towards, but she raced towards him to hug him. And he hugged her. But the bit which is very controversial and very shocking is the judge, Tammy Kemp, descended from the judge's bench, handed Google a Bible, and wrapped the convicted murderer in her arms. It is unclear whether the judge Kemp has ever done the same for any other murder convicted in her corrupt courtroom. But what I heard the, 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 the judge was saying is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I believe she turned to John 3.16. If those who have been to Sunday school, Lynn Prezzo, have you been to Sunday school? Darren Lewis, have you been to Sunday school? Kathy, have you been to Sunday school? And Red Snap in Instagram, Sunday school, one of the things, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have an eternal life. Mainstream media, social media is cracking up. Everybody's fuming. Well, not everybody's fuming. Many people are just fuming, especially within the black community, um, black activists. And many words that they're saying is this is crazy. Why do we black people just apologize for everything and just forgive everything just like that? Why? After all what white people have done to us. Many people are saying that. They're questioning and calling the young Brant Jean, Uncle Tom, and all these different names. Right? That's what is happening. This reminded me of R. Kelly. Not R. Kelly. <laughs> well, actually, I posted a picture of R. Kelly on my page. Actually, some naughty person <laughs> sent a, a picture of R. Kelly to me. And I, I just, I just being mischievous, just posted it. And, and the picture of R. Kelly... Um, is on my page and it says I heard you all you know are forgiving people <laughs> you know I heard you all forgiving people and and um, so the big picture is out there and everybody's just laughing and just you know freaking out because the big picture I heard you all forgiving people of course um, linking that with um, the family I feel because even the father um, forgive the mother forgive they said that's how they were brought up you know, father said he believed that there will be stiffer sentences anyhow still. Okay? So therefore, the most important thing is that she has gotten her due um, vic conviction. Maybe not the sentence that many people believe that she should get, but what she has gotten, she's convicted for murder. That is the police officer. Now, why are people so upset and angry over someone saying I forgive you I don't know what do you think why are people so unhappy and angry for someone saying the word I forgive you for what you've done it is wanting an ounce of flesh is it wanting blood what is it what is it that makes it difficult for a person to accept someone saying I forgive you I wrote something on my page <laughs> I'm looking at some of these yeah? I wrote something on my page to that effect and this is what I wrote and uh, was challenged by it as well but this is what I wrote and I'll read it I wrote that the, this family has a true revelation of Jesus Christ Mr. Jean's brother, Brand spoke to Miss Guga in the courtroom before her sentence was passed, visibly emotional, and he asked the judge if he could hug the defendant. 
And this is what I wrote. Only someone who understand the loving grace and mercy of God could be so compassionate to the killer of a family member. I personally, and this is my view, I applaud this young man and applaud the family for their actions toward the healing of themselves. Not what I said, of themselves. Not of the lady, but of themselves. Because unforgiveness and vengeance and all those things eat you up. And because right now, if this was a case whereby she got off free, there would have been riot. If it was a case whereby she really got a suspended sentence, there could be riot. And therefore there would be this outlet whereby people would be chanting down Babylon, no justice, no peace. But there's nothing like that in this case. Due process, conviction came in, murder. Due process, probation report or whatever like that, 10 years. People will disagree with that because they say that a, a, a guy who killed a dog of a police got four to five years. Remember that lady also who, who, who shot a gun in the air in self-defense? I think she got lots of years, if anything. That's that young lady who was being pimped for a while, she just got out recently, she got life, almost went to the death chamber for self-defense because they were pimping her out. And these are what many people fairly and justifiably are looking at as to the inconsistency in a way with the justice system in America. So I believe it's understandable for people to be angry to a certain extent. But where does anger lie? Where does it finish? Does it continue? Does it overspill? Right? Now I went further by saying it is towards the healing of themselves. They know their brother, son, friend won't come back. But they know that they will see him. That is if you understand the world biblical aspect and believe in Christ and believe in the, the resurrection and believe in heaven and hell. They believe that that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So I went further. They know based on their faith and based on their conviction because they are born again Christians. They know that they will be with the Lord one day. That is a family. And they know Mr. Gene is with the Lord because as I said to be absent in the body is to be present in the Lord. So they have this confidence that this assurance that all will be well. So it makes no sense for them to be angry, killing up themselves, hurting themselves, and as a result of that, lose the opportunity of seeing both and Jim again. Now I'm looking at that from the, the perspective of the family, because they have got the conviction, murder. The sentence is 10. The father said he wished it was even more. And the message here, what I picked up is this. And the message, I believe a lot of people need to grapple with, and especially black America at this time. America at this time, which is going through this very toxic moment, is that revenge and vengeance is not ours. It is the Lord. Right? That doesn't mean to say the justice system should not convict someone for a crime. Remember, even Jesus, while he was on the cross, and the, the, the thief, the convicted thief was next to him. Jesus forgave him. And say you'll be with me in paradise. But guess what? The thief still went to the death. Convicted and was sentenced. And he died still. But he was forgiven. So. And, and I believe very strongly. That many people will not understand this. Many people will not understand. That what, what, what the brother is going through. What the family is going through. And, and as a result of that. They had believed. I've got a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. They have got a revelation. Just like, and I'm using a scripture in Bible, there is a, a, a Stephen, who when he was stoned and he looked up and he stood up and he saw Jesus standing up, if anything. He's got a revelation of Jesus Christ. This is not something that anyone would understand. The family, I believe, has tapped into a truth and as a revelation of Jesus Christ. They have. And the hug, I believe, was not for the lady, was not for Gurga, was not for the police officer, but it was for the family. It was for, for them to keep their souls 
intact. That's what I believe in. To keep their souls intact. Now, many people will not agree. Many people will not see it from my perspective. Many people will disagree with me. Somebody said, I would just like the coin to be reversed. And what a beautiful word this would be. I mean, just say the, the, the tables to be turned. No wonder R. Kelly is saying, even though it's a spoof, I heard forgiveness is going around. Can I get it? Can I get some? Now let's 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 break down. Let's break down something about unforgiveness or forgiveness. Yeah? And I was sort of looking at it in a bit more because I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a teaching moment. I believe this is a healing moment. Because really and truly, anger unjustifiable. Anger doesn't help. Now they can now don't, don't get me wrong, you can be angry because Jesus was angry as well. Jesus took out his his, his, his whip and kicked those guys out of the temple. You got they got you got righteous anger. So you're not saying just like when I was talking about the politicians in, in remember that they should not be censored, their voice should not be censored. They should be passionate, they should be um boisterous, they should be angry and everything, but in your anger don't sin. That's what the Bible talks about. In your anger, do not sin. So nothing is wrong with being angry. But unforgiveness eats you up. Unforgiveness tears you up. Unforgiveness. That is why there's 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 a picture which which I posted, which somebody sent to me, and I believe it was a very poignant picture. And uh and and what it said, I, I posted it. Um many people still don't like it because they they think that persons who think like how oh, the brother might think or maybe justifying it is boarding along the line of being an Uncle Tom, a sellout and all those sort of things. That's what they're thinking is. That's what they believe it is. And what it says here, um, when you forgive, yeah, someone, is what it says. And it's by Bruce Van Horn. When you forgive someone, you set a prisoner free. Now, you may think that it is setting the lady free. That's why I said the hug is not for her. The hug is for them. The hug is for Brandt. When you set a prisoner free, so when you forgive someone, you set a prisoner free. Almost immediately, you discover that the prisoner was, who can guess that? The prisoner was you or the prisoner was me. We become or we or not to be that prisoner when they are unforgiving. It's like when someone is offended. Like right now, there's so many offenses going on in this world. Everybody's offended by a simple thing. If you turn left, I'm offended. If you turn right, I'm offended. If you speak too loud, I'm offended. If you say someone who is a D is a he and they turn at a sex change and become a she, they become offended. Everybody become offended. And as a result of those offense, they get angry. They get pissed off. They get mad. And they said, that person hurt me. I'll never forgive that person. I will never. And many people are saying this now. And I can see many persons within the black community are actually saying, they're speaking it, speaking it into their life. And what they're doing, they're wrapping up themselves in um, this metamorphosis of this swaddling clothes that ties them up into bondage. The family of Jean has freed themselves to be free may not be justifiable may not be understood by many but they are free themselves and it's important that we also free ourselves by by being what should I say be susceptible to forgive Tracy how are you Tracy you're in the States I don't know if you're around if you can even talk and if you can come on it'd be good to get your insight I would love to invite you on Tracy if you can even share your insight as you are in the United States of America and you see exactly what is going on. If you can, send me an invite. I'd love to get you on Tracy Humphreys. Because I believe this is I believe this young man is a mighty man of God. And I believe this young man has set the stage in a way for the healing of America at this time. Right? And it, it is powerful. It, it is a it is a learning moment. It is a teaching moment. A poignant teaching moment. Where we are trying to get rid of the anger. Now many people will say. After years of slavery. After years of this. 
years of um, racial um, dis 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 disadvantage, racism, Jim Crow, and all of those things. And here we are, turning our cheek, loving up the enemy, hugging up, uh, hugging the person who killed you. You're getting your hair done. Okay, no problem. But you can write in if anything like that. You know? Well, you should be like me, you know? Don't have to worry about the hair. Anybody? Uh, Sandra Brown Pinnock, I think you're there as well. <laughs> you know? Um, you know, if, you, if you're if you a boy like me, all of that is sorted. You don't have to worry about hair. You know? But anyway, I understand. But yeah, please contribute as well. I believe it's a point. But let me, let me just, let me just touch on a, a few points about forgiveness because I, I, Hatred and anger is a dangerous virus. That now, you, you, Kathy just said, hatred and anger is a dangerous virus. But the most powerful word, what Kathy just said, is virus. 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 A virus gets deep down in the body and it spreads like gangrene and eats you up. Till all of a sudden you become nothing. You watch those horror movies, they always talk about this virus and they try to contain this virus. And what they do sometimes, they will cut off some aspects. Or if a train or an airplane has a virus on it, what they want to do, shoot down that plane, if anything. Mash down that lie. And by shooting down that plane, what they're doing, they're stopping the virus from spreading. And I believe what is happening now is, is a curtailing of the virus, shutting down that virus of hatred. Okay? Sandra Brown said, forgiveness is a power to freedom, redemption. That is why Jesus said, Father, forgive him. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they have done. Right? So even though they do not know what they have done, Jesus is already saying, forgive them. They have crucified me. They are crucifying me. Am I preaching? <laughs> Crucify me. Even though they are crucified, but forgive them for they know not what they have done. That's, that's the message, really. I believe this was a powerful message set out right there for the whole world to see you know christians should be receptive to forgiveness but i'm alarmed at how many people are angry yes they're angry it's like Kanye west Kanye west said i would no longer do secular music i want to do gospel music i want to live my life for god for christ many people start to say is he trusted is he genuine Kanye west Oh no, I don't trust him. So what that what I believe they're saying? Be the same person with the so-called Illuminati playing out devil's music or whatever like that. So they can't believe. And the funny thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, it is Christians or persons who profess themselves to be Christians. Some some people are even saying, is he genuine? It is hard sometimes. And as I say, it's hard to kick against the pricks. It's difficult. For persons to, you see, the world has has become so blurred now. You know, the world has become so blurred now that what we understood was the good things are now accept are now deemed to be the bad thing. Whereby, for someone to say, "I forgive," how can you forgive? Don't you know what he has done? Can say, "I don't know if I can do the same," but it is a step in the right direction, and and that is fair because many people will say, uh, uh, I don't think I can do this. But they can say, boy, I accept that, uh, that guy is good, man. That guy is strong, you know. But I tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, and this is powerful. And this is a powerful revelation. That wasn't by his strength or by his might for that young man to do that. That was by the Spirit of God. That's what I believe, anyhow. That was, that. I listen, <laughs> I just got this revelation. There are persons who live and are in this world for a moment like this it's a moment like this a seize the moment moment whereby things happen and by it becomes a, 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 a moment that changes it set the stage and I believe right Tracy God used that young man right there to lead the path God will use anything even a donkey that wasn't that young man by his strength or by his you know not by not by his strength or by his power it was by god that's why god's spirit moving through that young man because it makes no sense for him to be angry it makes no sense for him to be um want vengeance 
It doesn't make sense that he want debt. Because that family believe, and the, the scripture that says, who against hope believe, who against hope. That family believe that they will see both of them again. But they know that they're going to see both of them again because both of them is with the Lord. The guy's a worship leader. You know, I know many people are trying to spread things around his name, but guess what? Nobody's perfect at the same time. You know? It's by God's grace and by God's mercy. Not by flesh, nor by blood. But it's by my spirit. The Lord says, nobody's perfect. So, so therefore, they know that they're going to see him again because to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. That's what the Bible says. So they know that in order for us, we got to make sure our life is right. So we don't want this to be a stumbling block in the way. If they didn't get just, if, if, if she walked away and, and she wasn't held and, and, um, and, um, and charged and go through the trial, I wouldn't accept that. You could, you could forgive as much as possible still, but there need to be justice still. Yeah? Unforgiveness leads to resentment. Resentment leads to bitterness. Bitterness leads to anger. Anger leads to violence. Violence leads to murder. So therefore, what is happening now, as what Tracy just said, the hatred in people's heart at this present moment, they're all murderers. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. If you hate or somebody, you kill them. You know what I mean? So therefore, by, by virtue of that, everybody's just sinning. Murderers. Everybody want hate. I can I, I see the black activists and I hear them saying and some of them are, and people have written to me and said Silver I don't agree with you and I say you don't have to agree with me but listen the gentleman the family got their justice the family the, the, the lady got convicted for murder she got 10 years now many will disagree with that Boris Johnson recently was, was told that it was unlawful when he uh, paroled parliament by the advice the Queen got but that was the justice which was meted out. So justice was done, whether you like it or not. But that doesn't stop you from being forgiven. Somebody may have owed you money or something like that, and 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 a situation like exists whereby you're not, um, they're not able to pay you back, and you're angry, you're bitter, and you say, oh, "I'll never do this again." Blah blah blah. I never lend money, and I never. But guess what? What are you doing? You're tying yourself up. You're tying yourself up and becoming a bitter person. It's like it's like people say, "I'll never trust again." But if you don't trust again, you, you're you're tying yourself up in a way whereby you're not um, being yourself. You're not being real. You have made the the cares of the world transform your turn you into someone else which you're not. Right? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Right? And 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 you know many people are going to be shocked and very many people are going to be surprised because guess what that lady <laughs> you know I don't know wh where she is now or whatever like that but she could be going to he heaven you know what I mean yeah give her life to the Lord and that's it anger is blind this is the reason why when anger takes country you lose all perspective because all rational is gone. What is the biblical meaning of forgiveness? Let's look at that. The Bible has plenty to say about forgiveness. The Greek word translated as forgive in the New Testament is aphime. Carried a wide range of meanings including to remit a debt, to leave something or someone alone, to allow an action to leave, to send away, to desert, to abandon, and even to divorce. Right? Why is it important? Forgiveness is for our own growth and happiness. When we hold on to hurt, pain, resentment, and anger, it harms us more than it harms the offender. Listen, I'm sure that many of you have offended someone. And you didn't know that you offended them. You have no idea that you offended them. Listen, I've offended people and I don't know because I was bang bang and says and, and says, yo, you offended me. And they're having you up. They're having you up. Come on. Someone say yes, this has happened to you. you they're, they're having you up so much and they I'm gonna hurt towards you. And you have no idea. But guess who is hurting? Who is binding them myself? Them. That's why it says it hurts it harms far more the offender. Right? 
Forgiveness frees us to live in the present. Forgiveness allows us to move on without anger or contempt or seeking revenge. This is a powerful moment, ladies and gentlemen. This is a powerful time. This is one of the most motivational things to, 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 um, to understand about what is taking place now. What is going on in the world? What is going on in America? What is going right now in the UK with the whole Brexit thing? People are angry. Families are at odds against each other. Peed off. You know? Family some of un, some people have unfriended their families in, in a sense. Blocked their family. Listen, I've had a family member who contacted me and said, Listen, I can't, you know, I, I, I can't um speak to you anymore, blah blah blah. You know? Yeah. They are. Unforgiveness, hurt, anger, it binds them up. Below are what so, so the, the four types of forgiveness along with some advice. Unconditional forgiveness. That's the highest type of forgiveness we can offer someone who has hurt us or is unconditionally forgiveness. Right? Conditional forgiveness, where you put a condition to it. Dismissive forgiveness, grace. Powerful you know and and you know so 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 therefore i think and this is my view in all of this and i'm to be i have to be sensitive as well when i when i when i when i speak to person when they come and they say they disagree with me on this point i i try not to be um uh what should i say arrogant and just say that's what you think but but try to apply uh, what should I say? Uh, a level of 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 grace. Uh, 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 a level of um, uh, what should I say? Being sensitive to persons, because like it or not, many people or many persons are hurting. As of that, it is funny why that is hurting people, but it's a reality that many people are hurting by that share innocence of forgiveness but what I believe is happening is that there's a confrontation because many people cannot understand so what they do they throw words at the young brother that is um, Brandt they call him different names sell out Uncle Tom fool stupid and many people many people are saying things like why are black people like this why do we like this we turn <clears throat> we allow these persons to walk over us yeah so, so therefore, they have got to be some level of grace, but we cannot compromise because right now I believe this has touched a chord in America. This has touched a chord. I, you see, two areas where it has touched a chord. Um, <clears throat> the black, black, the black race is um, is angry. Uh, the lack of reparation, rep, rep, reparation, the the ongoing racism, which is a reality, the S Jim Crow and all those elements, many believe is still active. Right, the this, the economic structure, which doesn't, um, many would say, doesn't go in favor of us. So many people are angry with that. So when they see this, they see it like it's a slap in the face. And then you ask yourself, now how do we get around this? Fist for fist? Eye for eye? Fire against fire? Or what? How do we, how do we address this? And, and that's a big question. Many people say we have black people whereby they came to Africa with the Bible they gave us the Bible and they captured us. And many people are saying that is still what is happening. <clears throat> many people are saying the church is not real. Many people are saying this doesn't make sense. So there's a mass level of confusion going on now. And this has gone straight into the midst of the whole thing. Straight into the frame. And like it's like a, a scud missile that blow up everything completely. So people don't know what to do. What can they demonstrate and say? No justice, no peace? No. There's no rational to say no justice, no peace. 
No, there's nothing. There's no fighting. There's no justification for any fight. So the fight now has turned now onto the family brand. So the black family, the black community, in the sense who are not happy, have turned against the family or brand for leading that charge. And then the judge, now I don't understand that part really, but I heard something. The judge was quoting the scriptures to her, John 3, 16, if you listen carefully. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's what she was saying to her. Now it's strange for a judge to come off. Now many people are saying, you do not have judges coming off the table on here. What's going on here? Nobody understand what's happening. <laughs> but if you understand the revelation of Christ and understand the revelation of the gospel, you see it unfold right before your very eyes. That was the gospel message right there. It was a preaching, it was a message, it's a sermon, it's a going to the world, preach the gospel. That's what took place there. The revelation of Christ just unfolded right now Tracy if you're on and you can come on if you can you're in your car now your hair is done <laughs> come on if you can if you can I'll invite you on or just just press the invite button you know what it is you know it goes when you do things love to get a perspective there it is interesting I'm very excited I must say and I've got to maintain that positive mental attitude I've got to maintain that the essence of that because it makes no sense and I've gone over it and I've said it again it makes no sense to be angry makes no sense to be bitter makes no sense to seek vengeance makes no sense to say no justice no peace there's no rational many will disagree with me but that's the, that's my thinking and that's my saying but I was but I, but I was reading something else uh, about this and uh Someone wrote an article. They said, the peculiar nature, the peculiar nature of this spectacle was immediately reframed as a radical act of love and Christian faith, echoing the public forgiveness offered by bereaved family members to mass murderer and white supremacist Dylan Roof, who was convicted of shooting and killing nine worshippers at Emmanuel Church in South Carolina. Superior film Chris Evans called Jean's Embrace of Goga easily one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Senator Ted Cruz described it as a beautiful, powerful example of Christian love. You know? Um, Tracy, I'm not seeing you. Uh, Tracy, I'm not seeing you. Uh, Tracy, if you turn your phone um, um, horizontal, vertical, um, um, hori not vertical, um, landscape, and see if you can find a way you can invite yourself in. Because there's a, I'm not actually, s ah, there you are. Let me see if I can get you on. Okay, I sent you an invite. Uh, I'll see what, what can happen there. It says, killing nine worshippers. Okay, <laughs> there you are. Hi. 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 Hey. How are you? Yeah, I'm just coming out of the hairdresser. <laughs> okay, let me see if it's okay. I'll I tell your husband that it's okay. Yeah, I'll I, I, I call your husband and say it's cool, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you hear me well? We can hear you very I can hear you very well. So where, where are you again? Tell me where are you now? Where, are you, where in the States are you? Um. Well, currently, I get my hair done in the Bronx. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I'm just sitting in my car. Yeah. So tell me, Tracy, now, give us, give me a pers You are there in the states now, and, and this is blowing up in a way. Give me your perspective of of this whole episode. Oh, my goodness. Well, first of all, my first re reaction uh, to Brant's, um, to what Brant did, you know, I was just in tears. That was the first thing, because the display of that kind of love is so unique in the world that we live in, that it yeah. really took me by surprise. I was very surprised. 
And I was just in tears. And, and my, my first thought was, this is God, because only God could do something so powerful and so spectacular. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when I saw the, the way she ran to him and held on to him, mm -hmm. I just felt in my spirit that this woman was even begging for some kind of mercy. She may not really know God, but I just sensed the way she held on to him. It was just like mercy. The, it was, the exchange was just so supernatural to me. Um, yes. But then what started happening was, of course, when the judge came out of her seat and gave uh, Amber the Bible, when the bailiff or the other uh, uh, African-American female officer was kind of patting her head down, you yes. know, and fixing her hair, um, you know, I think people are more outraged at that because they were saying, you know, they felt like those two women kind of overstepped some boundaries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And to a to a to a a large extent, I I believe that there was some of that. But one of the things that I've been doing as a woman who's really walking with Christ is, you know, certain things that look um, crazy to us looks good to God. And I had to remember that. And I said, you know what, wherever God is being glorified, who am I to say that's wrong or that's right? I saw it and I just kept saying, this is God. So it yeah. gave me a certain level of comfort, even with what the judge did, because it's very rare that a judge comes out of their, their chamber yeah. to, to deal with, with a criminal, right? And Indeed. so, and if they do, it's usually not in the public eye like that. So it was just a moment of God being glorified. And then now you have society is in an outrage because now they're, of course, making fun of what Brant did. And then it's a meme now going around with Grant hugging the woman, uh, the judge hung, hugging the woman, the other African-American police officer stroking her hair. So now yeah. it's being perverted into we are uncle toms we're always the yeah. one uh, uh forgiving we're still in the slave mentality and i said my god what is happening and this is not just uh this is not just um you know unbelievers this is christian yes you know yes. and and a few people have argued with me because i said you know what this is what you know living with christ look like on my facebook page and some people inbox me and they're like yeah tracy but why do we okay okay I, i've lost um tracy a bit there um why i try to get back tracy if she's available tracy just let me know if you're in a good position I just saw Yola Gray Baker on FFBJ page saying, Silver and Still, I got lambasted yesterday for expressing this on my page. An unbelievable moment in the courtroom of the cop who shot her neighbor. This is what humanity is all about and a show of what real love is. Tear jerking, dignity, humanity, humility, forgiveness, love in its raw form from a black man, from a black um, young man to a white man after she killed his brother. This is the love that Jesus spoke about and is obviously still speaking about. Why can't some of us get it? So I agree with you. I don't think the forgiveness that Bolton Jean's brother expressed to the white police observer what she did, but it will give the young man peace. It's up to her to figure herself out with her God. And my thing is, we as human, it's not our responsibility to bring her to her last right. Nobody died and left me in charge. And I believe God was with that young man and he has carried out his responsibility. Why are we condemning him for choosing his path and his right? I agree with all you said. It's a learning and healing moment. We have not solved these problems yet by lashing, lashing out. Um, yeah, that by lashing out, can't we try something else? Definitely. Uh, Tracy, if you try to come back on, do what you did before because I'm not seeing you again. See if I can get you to to come back as you did to put your phone in landscape and see if we can get it back again this is this is as what um my 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 my, my colleague said people prefer to see a life lost instead of being saved everyone needs a second chance if god 
and forgive us as human beings it's 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 um is is it human to forgive human yes and and i and i believe that is really uh powerful jennifer uh mitchell as well this is a, a powerful moment ladies and gentlemen this is i'm gonna get back tracy to come back on this is a moment that we need to capitalize on if 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 good men don't do what is right then evil prevails and i think that is something which is very 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 crucial totally very crucial let me see if i can get back back tracy again i sent you an invite tracy let's see if we can get you again um and and and, and we, that's okay it's all right we, we, yes yeah so you're saying now about yes yes yeah, so 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 basically what one of the things that um that you know going back to the whole scene and what people are going crazy about is that what the judge did of course what what the the african american uh female officer did and then there is of course uh what brant did but people there's a there's a large portion of people that understand what Brant did. More of the argument is what the judge did and what the yeah. the, yes. the African American officer did. Uh, yes. And so people, I think what's happening with Americans is that we've been so oppressed. And what's been happening here, there's so much trauma and PTSD when it comes to the police force, because a lot of people have lost, let's face it, uh, there's yes. been a lot of injustice. There's a lot of police officers that has gotten off, uh, you know, they, they didn't have to do any time for killing uh, innocent yes. people. So I understand the outrage. I really do. Yes. There's a part of me that understands the anger because as African-Americans, we go through a lot in America in, in terms of the police force and the people, the justice system. Uh, very often you can say there's no justice for us. Yes. Uh, are, are, and, uh, are you, are you, uh, am I still connected? Yeah, yeah, it throws a while ago, but we're back now. Yes, no, just yeah, okay, right. Tracy just mentioned a key point there no justice for us. She's sort of off in the car now, and it's the reason why she keeps cutting out. Um, a friend of mine in the states saying they're really uh peed off by this because they worry about their son and they know what the police is about. So, what she said a while ago is very crucial, and it's the reason why I'm also very sensitive how I go about this discussion not to sound very um to um pompous or too confident but to really understand some of the concerns and the anguish by uh black americans with these level of action and i i do agree the the, the cop rubbing the lady's hair and also the the cop rubbing the hair the lady's hair and also the judge that was somewhat a bit um you know a bit uh, I would say a bit OTT. I'm sending an invite again to you, Tracy. Tracy, uh, when you come on, I'm going to make sure that you don't have to stay too long, just in case, if as you're on the move, and maybe the Wi-Fi while you're out there may, may not be that great at the same time as you're on the road. But but, but the, the, the big question is, how do we ensure that it doesn't deflect onto the police rubbing the ladies' air. You know, you know, yeah. Tracy, what I was gonna what I was gonna say, Tracy, um, let me know how your time is because I know you're out on the road and the Wi-Fi. No, I'm I'm okay. Uh -huh. I'm okay. It's okay. Just, you know, I wanna make sure that I'm I'm getting the Wi Fi. But yeah. but but what I was saying is there's there is a level of injustice in America for African Americans that is very concerning. Um, yes. So that part of it I understand, but one of the things that I can't um, co-sign to is if you're having a moment, this family needs healing. This family needs, uh, you know, they needed to do this, this young man, Brant, needed to do this for his brother. He was very clear. I'm doing this because this is what my brother would have done, 
right? Yeah. And so that's the part that my heart was 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 very empathetic because I'm like, yeah, while some people may not be able to give on that level, uh, forgive on that level, some people may not be able to hug Amber because she's the murderer of their their beloved family member, right? Yeah. I understand all of that. But how dare we uh, judge somebody else's process of healing, right? So yes. I understand that America is in an uproar over the police force and what they've done and how many lives, innocent lives, have been lost at the hands of police officers. And not just, they're, they're talking about white police officers, let's be specific. So I think everyone wasn't just looking at the Botham case. They were looking at it as other people need justice. So this one woman here, she should be paying for everyone else's justice. Yeah. And so that is the, the complicated situation that's happening here. So what happens is if there's any case that takes place, you know, African-Americans are looking for some kind kind of reparation, some kind of restitution, some kind of recompense, right? For for a lot of the things that we've gone through. But when yeah. I saw this, I said, no, this isn't this isn't a moment for us to piggyback on it and get the justice that we feel we deserve. This is a moment for us to recognize that this is about God. It, it's it's about yeah. God. And so that's the part that people are not understanding. Another thing that's bothering me is that Christians are literally using the term like, I wouldn't forgive. I wouldn't forgive them. Mm. I wouldn't give them a pass. And I'm like, well, what Bible are you, what Bible, sorry. I'm like, what Bible are you reading? Are you reading the word of God that I'm reading? Because it mm. says that we have to forgive. So if we're not forgiving, then what are we doing? You know, like, yeah. I'm like, the, the word of God is very clear about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And if you don't forgive, you become a bitter person. Bitterness, I said it earlier, unforgiveness, it leads to bitterness. And it goes yeah. through many stages until it becomes murder. So you want yeah. to do everything in your power to forgive. And so there's a lot mm -hmm. going on in America. It's not just, it, it's bigger than both of them. It's bigger yes. than both of yes. them. There is a tremendous amount of pain in the African-American community. And they're looking for some sort of restitution. They, yes. they need some kind of justice. And so it, it's almost like this was another slap in the face because although Amber got 10 years, people were saying she should have got life. She should have got 25 years. She should have got all of this, right? And so it's it's just a mess. It's bigger than both of them. Trust me. Mm. It is so much tell, bigger. So, so tell me, the, the police officer rubbing the lady's ear and the judge, which is somewhat overshadowing, which, 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 has, which, has, which has somewhat overshadowed the, the whole aspect of brand. How, how do right. we keep the deflect? How do we get rid of that deflection? Because you mentioned about all these memes going around now, you know. I'm, I mean, there's even one. I, I I I posted this one because it was really funny. R. Kelly was like a bunch of R. Kelly saying, "I hear forgiveness is going on. What about me?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, to be honest with you, I don't know if R. Kelly said that. To be honest know, with I you, I don't know, know if he said that. Someone and and of course we've been laughing and we've been joking about it. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure R. Kelly would love to get in on this uh forgiveness uh path. You know, he's like, Can a brother get some of this this love? Can a brother get a hug? You know? Uh yeah. <laughs> R. Kelly, yeah. R. Kelly needs a hug right now. <laughs> yeah, so. but, but, the key, but, but the key thing now is you mentioned something very crucial about this bitterness and this anger and this need for reparations, which is lacking in America, Black community and then the police. How, how do you see that getting, how do you believe that's going to happen? Do you think there's a need for some reconciliation commission in America? I mean, since we're on that topic, 
like in South Africa, because there's never ever been something whereby they all sit down and say, we are, we are, we are sorry for all those years. They, because you are a president that say, let's make America great again. And many people say, great when? Great at that time. You know, so it's all confusing and all muddled up. Yeah, it, it really is. Is there in the, I don't know. I mean, this, this well, it runs so deep. I mean, these, the pain that Americans, African Americans, Black Americans have been through, uh, the injustice that we've been through. Uh, you know, a lot of people are putting slavery in this. There's so much that yes, every absolutely. scenario that happens publicly, everyone is looking for a way to get redemption. Um, and, and I don't know if, you know, jumping on a case like what happened with Botham, uh, the Botham family, you know, it, it, jumping on the case and expecting to have 400 years erased, what, you know, what would life have been enough? You know, because there's some people that if they gave her life, for instance, let's just say there's some that go that would have said she needed the death penalty. If they gave her 25 years, there's some that would have been like, why didn't they give her 50 years? I mean, only 25, you know, or, or why didn't she get life? And so it, it's there is an, an, an unquenchable thirst yes. for justice in America. And what's happening is a lot of people, uh, you know, their families are in it, their community, they put their communities, their family, their pain, their hurt, their suffering, whatever is going on with the African American community, um, you know, whatever we've suffered over the years. And just to just to add a little bit more depth to yes. it, even when President Obama came into office, you know, African Americans in 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 America were saying, "Oh, now that we have a black president, everything's going to be okay now because oh, right. now yeah, he's yeah. going to work for us. Now he's going to make things better for us." And when people didn't get the the desired result or the the, the result they had in their mind, it turned mm -hmm. into bitterness and it turned into anger because they, you know, they started looking at him like, oh, he's, he's not helping us. So, you know, what people have to understand and what I understood, I be a person that looked to the system. But one of the things was when I learned that God is about justice, God is a just God, God is a forgiving yes. God, God is a loving God, God is a God of redemption, God is a God of of, uh, you know, of miracle signs and wonders. He's so many things. Yes. God is a healer. God is a, 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 he gives you peace. So when I put my heart with God, I started being less and less hurt and offended when these things happen. I read the word of God and I understand as I looked at, uh, you know, all the different stories in the Bible, things that happen to the different prophets, to the different apostles, uh, to some of the most powerful people that God loved very much. They were under a lot of persecution. They had to suffer a lot and they had to pay for their injustices as well, right? So when I look at the word of God, I said to myself, I said, well, it's in the Bible. It is written, <laughs> you know, it's written in the Bible. Yeah. So uh, what we go through as African-Americans in, uh, in this world um, I don't know about other people, but it lets me know that, Father, you know, we go through so much persecution as a people. Yeah. It just lets me know that we're that much more special. But that's just my mm -hmm. own little personal perspective yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's, well, I thank you for coming on, um, Tracy, at so short notice. But uh, I, I think there's such a, a need to sort of um, use this as a, what should I say, a, a pivotal moment. A, yes. A platform. To, to really labor into it. And I, I watch I watch to see how the churches um, take hold of this as well. Because I, as I said before, I believe that when he did what he did, many people say, how did he do it? I say it wasn't him did it by himself. It wasn't by his strength. <laughs> it was by God that actually worked through him at that moment. It was like a God moment, a Caesar day moment. And um, it was for God's glory. Just like when... <clears throat> When Princess Diana died, when Princess Diana died, 
and when they had the, the funeral, that preacher or that priest led the whole world to the Lord's prayer. Mm. Yeah, and it, was, it, it led the whole world because, you know, it was one of the most watched funerals. And he led yes. the whole world to the Lord's prayer. And the point is that in everything, in every situation or whatever, I believe God will give, get his glory through it somehow. And I believe that is what is happening. And the black activists, the nation of Islam, I know they're thinking, I know how they're thinking towards this now. And that's why I said, one has, because I've been, uh, been um, sent messages by persons who are along that particular line say so they don't agree with me. But I kept saying, you can't stop someone from forgiving someone. Please remember that she did get convicted for murder. She did get convicted for murder. The only thing you may not like is really the sentence, which is 10 mm -hmm. years, which I would somewhat agree. I believe it's a bit short because mm -hmm. she might be about five years time. But she did get convicted for murder. So what's yeah. wrong with this young what's wrong with this young man saying, I forgive you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I yeah, because so. because like that's why I was saying it's not about it's not they, people aren't thinking about the Botham family. They're thinking about their own personal justice that they wanted to see happen. And so that's the challenge in America when these cases happen. It's just a compounding effect. It's because so many people have been hurt and so many people have felt helpless you know they stand by and they watch so many of our people be uh killed and 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 then they're you know the murderer gets away and then the society fights and argue it, it's it's a it's a it's a situation in america but you know i think you know the 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 biggest thing you just said it uh god got glory out of this and and another thing is that I just want to put out there publicly, a lot of Christians need to read their Bible and we need to get back to some basics and we need to understand the power of forgiveness because the power of forgiveness is not even just for the other person. It's for you. It's for you to set the captive free. And that captive, you said that earlier, Silborn, yeah. you said, you know, it's about freeing yourself. You know, yeah. and the reason why there's there's too many angry and bitter people in the world. And so if you're angry and bitter, unforgiveness produces anger and bitterness, which is a hindrance in your life. So if you don't forgive people, that young man was smart. He he was it was Holy Spirit led and he listened to the spirit within him. Forgive her, release her so that it doesn't hinder him from moving forward and enjoying his life without, of course, both of them isn't going to be there, but he can forgive not just for himself, but he's forgiving because he knows that's what his brother is going to do. So if people will take themselves out of it and recognize that, you know, God can use any situation to change society and give a different perspective. And he used this situation to bring about a, a, a powerful display of what we really should be doing as Christians. To me, it was yeah. a display. And people say things like, well, I wouldn't do that. And I said, you know what? I had to tell a friend of mine, you're saying that because you're not in it. But if you were in that situation, you don't know what it is that God will have you do in that moment. You may find yourself doing the same exact thing that Brant yeah. did. Yes, yes, yes. That that moment, that that season moment period, as as much as possible. Well, listen, um, Tracy, we will follow up on this, but um, let people know because a few people are asking and say this lady may be the one that changed changed the nation. <laughs> um, let, let person know the, the work that you're doing with your husband um, with reconciliation and all those sort of things just let people know at the same time <laughs> well my husband and I we do a marriage ministry it's called reconcilable difference and essentially yeah. we're a private page, Facebook group a small group of us and and really we're about encouraging married couple so we have singles on there 
uh, engaged people on there, divorced people on there, newlyweds on there. Um, my husband and I have been married 19 years. We've been through a lot. And our goal is to encourage people uh, to stay married, encourage people to work on themselves, to heal their marriage, heal their issues. We talk a lot about healing. We talk a lot about, uh, you know, honoring and loving each other. It's just a support. So we have conversations every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern yeah. Standard Time. We also have a um, social media page is called Reconcilable Differences um, on, sorry, on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Join us. Uh, we love to talk about marriage. We want to see more families being healed, more people getting married and living the life that God says that we should live. Mm. Amen. All right. Well, well thank you um, very much, Tracy. Hi to your husband as well. And, I will. Uh, and of course, you I know I'm, I'm due to come on to your platform one time. Yes, you if, are. Um, you owe you owe us an appearance. So we will talk <laughs> offline and God yeah. bless you. And I love the fact that you're covering this topic. It needs to be covered. We need to mm -hmm. have an ongoing discussion about this. And we really need to assess ourselves as Christians. We need a, to yeah. assess ourselves and say, what am I doing and what am I thinking as a Christian? Am I really walking with God? And if you if you don't have forgiveness, watch that scene with Brant about 10 times. And maybe on yeah. the 10th time, you'll get the bigger message. But what about Kanye West? What's your thoughts on Kanye West? <laughs> on, on what? Kanye West, when he says he's not doing any more secular music, he's only doing gospel music. And lots of oh, people Kanye. Are with it. You know what? All I'm going to say about Kanye is this. God can use anyone. Anything. He can use anyone. He can use anything. With uh, you know, with with Kanye West, I'm still watching him from the side because, of course. Uh, the, the word of God says you will know people by their fruit, right? So he's yeah. produced some fruit that has really given the public a very skeptical eye. So now what I'm doing is using discernment as I'm watching him and listening to him. But, you know, I watched uh, when he went to Jamal, um, Pastor Jamal's sure. church, and yeah. I was moved by that. I'm going to be honest. I was listening to the gospel music that they were doing and I would I found myself ready to praise and jump up. It felt, you know, it it felt genuine, but again, we have to use discernment and give it time to play out. Mm. But but at the end of the day, I always say this, God can use anybody in any situation at any time at any place, on any level. He can use anybody that he mm. chooses to use, and I trust him. I don't necessarily always trust people, but I trust God. Yes, yes, yes. As someone said to me, how genuine is Kanye West? And I, asked, I, I put the question to the person, how genuine is Silver? And how genuine is you? I mean, just saying that we, we can't, I was saying to somebody, we, we cannot be um, a toll road to heaven and we are not on the board of God advisors to allow people into his kingdom. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's for Amen. He, it's for him to do what he wants to do and clean us up because none of us are perfect. <laughs> you know? All right. So listen, Tracy, listen, all the best. And um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll we we we'll, let's we're gonna follow this up at some point. Let's see how it unfolds because I know it's gonna get bigger. But Amen. I, I think it's so important that we see we, we seize the moment as, as a way of actually getting into the maze. Because right now, as you can see, America is very split, divided. But at the same time, God is in charge. <laughs> yes, you know he is, 100%. And I trust him. So the outcome is going to be very powerful. So I'm looking forward to the following months um, of this to see what's going to come from it. There's going to be a revelation that's going to be ongoing. So I look forward to it. And keep up these conversations, Silborn. They're very powerful. Thank you so much. Good stuff. All right. Have a good night. And good night. Me. God bless you. <laughs> it was good seeing you. Awesome. 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 Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank um, 
I saw short notice for Tracy to come on, but I and um, and for her and uh, and for those, I want to read something that Aisha still standing Thomas said. She said, "I personally think the missing piece is not that we should forgive, but that we as a people of color break the cycle of oppression and inequality. It's easier to forgive than it is to change the injustices in our world. This has been ongoing." issue for people of color for a long time like i heard one of both times attorneys say it should not have taken an almost perfect guy to finally get a murder conviction what about the countless others that may have lived a good life but yet they were not armed the other side is we all grieve differently and it takes everyone different amounts of time to heal and forgive lastly what do we tell our children about cases like this where someone comes into your home kill you cold-blooded and they get 10 years but a black man kill a police dog and get life I, I was talking about that as well Aisha I think you got 45 years um, it's a thing like thing that angers the black community and that's the reason why I do say that there's a level of anger which is out there which justifiable and I do understand uh, as much as possible and it's the reason why I'm sensitive when I approach this and how I respond to persons who do not agree with me I, I, I sort of approach them not with a very self-righteous or a confident way but one in in a, in a sense of humility um as well i'm also forgiven but let's not be blinded by the clear injustice of so many of our people being killed that was not um which is correct i still don't think that if the shoe was on the, on the foot that most people would have been so quick to forgive although we should we have some of the same christian people highlighting this situation um of forgiveness uh, we just have a long way to go Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Please share this video and um, let's talk about it. And I'd love to hear your views as well. And, uh, and all the best to the family and all the best to you. And as we learn the power of forgiveness and to share that with anyone, no matter what, um, in this world. Okay? Have a good night. And those on Instagram as well, um, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, um, you know, um, Lyndon and hello, um, Shauna Kay. God bless and peace out. Cheers. Um, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.